Hello, and welcome to the Flip and Shift podcast. My name is Julie Walls. This podcast was based on the Flip and Shift's tagline, flipping your thinking to then shifting your behavior. The Flip and Shift podcast focuses on temperament to then how we evolve in our thinking to which influences our behaviors. We create belief systems throughout life, which affects the outcomes in our lives. Did you know that you can reprogram these belief systems to produce the outcomes you so desire? No matter what you're dealing with, there will always be a solution for you. So this podcast (laughs) should give you some hope. Yay! With each episode, we'll be chatting with leading experts in the field that have overcome struggles of their own. They found their way to overcome areas in their lives that needed focus and are now actually helping others to find their way. We all have a story to share. Let's learn from our past to change our future and most importantly, inspire and help others along the way. If you are wanting to feel empowered, inspired, and are ready to make those changes in your life, you are subscribed to the right podcast. And hey, thank you so much for your support. Now, grab your favorite drink, or snack, turn up the volume, kick back, and enjoy this chat. Without further ado, I have Sabrina Martelli. She is from Be a Diamond Coaching Services. Sabrina is a success and manifestation mindset coach with a background in social work. Her goals are to inspire and encourage individuals to break through their limiting beliefs that they may have in order to manifest massive success. She is super successful. You guys, I'm in her group. She's fantastic. She's really inspiring. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about Sabrina and how she's transformed into a successful coaching business. So first and foremost, hello, Sabrina. And thank you so much for joining us. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. Yes. That was fantastic. And congratulations on your upcoming, you know, podcasts and features that you have coming up. That's fantastic, Julie. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I really appreciate it. And really, honestly, I picked up a lot of pointers from you through your page, your Facebook page. So thank you so much for all your services and everything that you do for folks. So I'm simply honored. So now, first and foremost, where are you located? Where are you out of? So I am in a small rural town called Rockwood, Ontario, Canada. So oh, I you are, am. Oh, I didn't realize yeah. you're, you're Canada. Okay. All right. Oh, awesome. yes, I'm north of the border. So <laughs> you are. Yes. <laughs> So have you yes. lived there all your whole life? I have lived there my whole life. Yes. Born and raised. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, do you have a family and children? Yes, I do. So I have been married for, oh gosh, how long have we been married for now? 13 years. Isn't that a bugger when you don't even remember? <laughs> I know. I'm like going over 14, 15 years and I'm losing count, to be honest with you. It's, it's yeah, terrible. <laughs> I'm sure my husband doesn't appreciate that, but that's, a, <laughs> we've been that's together for a long time and so have you, which is awesome. That just is a testament to your successful marriage. It takes work. <laughs> oh, it does. It does take work. Yeah, definitely. And we have two little ones. So I have a daughter and a son and they are, my daughter just turned nine and my son is going to be turning seven. So they keep us hopping. That's for sure. Oh, for sure. That age is extremely busy. Yes, I mm-hmm. understand. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to know a little bit about your upbringing. I mean, how was it? Was it pretty simple, normal? And and how did you start to kind of go into the work that you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, my upbringing, yeah, I mean, it wasn't anything profound. You know, I come from an Italian background. Both of my parents are Italian. They immigrated here into Canada. And, you know, we had a, a fairly good, positive upbringing. I have a younger sister as well. You know, they were, what I found for my upbringing is I always had this calling, you know, I always felt this need to kind of help individuals and to help, you know, quote unquote, the underdog. It was something that I always did. Even as a child, I remember that. And growing up through, you know, my adolescent years, um, I volunteered. It was just something that I felt 
inspired and that I needed to do. And I think part of what drives that is as a child, you know, I was someone who always struggled with my self image and my self concept. I was heavier set as a child. And, you know, I found that, you know, sometimes children can be mean and I was teased a lot. Right. And so I think that having that experience and growing through that and dealing with, you know, the emotions and trying to grow in to this confident woman, when you're questioning, you know, your image and your worth, I think that that really is the underlying driving factor in terms of what pushed me to, you know, pursue social work as a career. Oh, wow. Okay. So your background is in social work. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So my background is in social work. I have my master's in social work. So a master's degree in social work. I actually have a certification in cognitive behavioral therapy as well. And I'm a graduate from the thinking into results program through the Proctor Gallagher Institute. So that's a bit of my professional personal development that I've done. That is awesome. boy. You, and so you know what really caught my attention is when you said you kind of knew you kind of trusted that gut instinct from when you were younger that you wanted to help mm-hmm. others. So you mm-hmm. naturally went down this road and, and discovered this path, right? Yes. That's yes. amazing. Some folks, they just don't know what they want to do. They can't mm-hmm. connect to that gut instinct of, you know, what makes them feel good or what's their purpose. And that yes. is amazing that you connected to that at such a young mm-hmm. age. That's yeah. Awesome. And, and I want to help others do the same. Right. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, we do what we do is because I want to help others to recognize that they need to trust their intuition. You know, your intuition never lies to you. It never lies to you. And it will never lead you down the wrong path. And the only reason why we second guess is because we don't have a strong mindset or we don't have a strong self image about ourselves. And so that's really why I do what I do. That is freaking awesome, Sabrina. That's (laughs) awesome. Thank you. Okay. So when did you start going into the kind of like working with the professional development piece? Is what I'm curious about because personal yeah. and professional, they kind of like cross one another, but you really focus on helping working professionals, correct? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, we know that, you know, you focus on helping working professionals, but the work we do, you know, with our clients, right, it impacts all areas of your life. So, you know, you have individuals that are seeking coaching services who are entrepreneurs or who are working professionals or in the corporate world, you know, and they originally seek out your services because they're either feeling stuck or they're wanting to do something else and they don't know what they want to do. They've kind of lost their way, but yeah. then it ends ends up seeping into so much more, right? It really and truly does. Yeah. It affects relationships. It affects how we work with other people, even, you know, partnerships, family. I mean, it just really, truly does. It filters out. Mindset is so Mm -hmm. huge. So Mm -hmm. now let me ask you, did you struggle with mindset initially when, as a working professional? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I come from the premise that we all have core beliefs, right? So we all have these core beliefs, either about ourselves, or how we view relationships, how we view like our professional career, or just the world around us. And these core beliefs that we have, you know, they have shaped us into who we are. Yeah. But sometimes we have negative core beliefs mm-hmm. and a negative core belief may have started from, you know, a negative experience that you had 100%. And we don't discount that this negative experience happened. But then typically what happens is individuals then attach a story to that. They attach a perception to that. Yeah. Right. And then it dictates everything they do yeah. in their life. Right. And so my story, you know, because I struggled with my self image was, you know, I'm not worthy enough or I'm not good enough. And so I always had this drive to do more and do more and do more and become this perfectionist, which we all know is, you know, this ideal that nobody can achieve. And so you know, for me personally, I struggled with that in my professional field. And I hit this roadblock where I just felt like I wasn't doing enough 
there was something else that was meant for me. You know, I was in the capacity of helping others for sure, but I just felt like I needed to do more. And that's when I decided to hire my own coach. And honestly, it was like a light bulb went off, you know, doing that intentional work on yourself consistently every single day, there is something to be said about investing in yourself. And so that was, you know, that was my struggle. And that's how I chose to overcome that struggle. That's awesome because you are exactly correct. I have no shame in the fact that I've hired my own coaching, you know, Mm -hmm. fitness coach. I had my own reprogramming coach. I mean, I have pulled from everything in every facet of my life. So I think it's really important, like you said, to reach out and get those services if if we need help in those areas. Yes, yeah, it's so important because, you know, when you are struggling or when you're stuck, you're looking through that lens of stuckness Right. And so everything around you seems like a struggle and seems gray and seems hard to pull yourself out of. And so if you have someone that can guide you, that's not looking through that lens of stuckness, that can hold you accountable, that can maybe help you to see things in a different light. It's very, very powerful. Can I ask you, what is your process when somebody comes to you and they just feel so stuck? They feel, you know, that worthless feeling or the failure thoughts and everything else that comes up, those limiting beliefs. How do you transition them into more of an empowerment way of thinking? Yeah, it's a really great question. So it's a process, right? I mean, these core beliefs that we have didn't develop overnight. They developed over time and we validated them throughout our life. And so they are ingrained in our way of thinking and they fuel our thoughts every single day. And so the first thing that I say to individuals is you cannot expect that you are going to reverse that belief overnight. You know, if you are 34 years old and you're coming to me, you know, you can't expect a belief that took 34 years to develop and become ingrained to change overnight. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is I help individuals to see that, yes, you know, it may have developed because of something that happened or an experience that they had, you know, that triggered this belief about themselves or about the world. But they then attached a story to that. They attached a perception to that that's not based in facts. And so you have to get them to see the facts. So I can use myself as an example. You know, I felt I'm not worthy. That's like my core belief. So then I would look at the evidence. What evidence supports this statement that I'm not worthy? And what evidence goes against that? 10 times out of 10, if you focus on facts, you cannot find any facts that will prove that someone is inherently an unworthy person. I love that. Mm -hmm. What you just said is like a light bulb moment for me. There you go. But I just took something away from that, which is so true is that we have these narratives going on in our head and then we're we're doubting ourselves. We're talking about, oh, I'm not worthy to, you know, succeed in this area of professional growth. And Mm -hmm. really, if you do, if you kind of dissect that, if you take time with that and look at, okay, well, what facts are bringing me to that conclusion, it makes sense the way you said it. (laughs) I love that. That is such a good takeaway. I really appreciate that. Now, my other question is, as you worked with clients, now you just gave me a a light bulb moment, right? And you just witnessed (laughs) that on video. But my other question is, or what are some other, you know, revelations that you've actually witnessed? I think it's the most amazing thing as a coach to watch Mm -hmm. clients have those light bulb moments. What other things Mm -hmm. have you seen? Yeah, well, you know, there's so many. (laughs) But for me, I I think, you know, I think the light bulb moment for me is when a client realizes that they can do this themselves. Yeah, right. So when I have provided them with the tools, when I provided them with the strategies, and then they suddenly realize and they have the confidence to be able to go through this process themselves, that is, you know, the most inspiring light bulb moment for me because then I've empowered them to be able to take away you know everything that they've learned and to enter into the world with this much stronger and healthier and powerful mindset Mm -hmm. where they can then challenge their own core beliefs on the fly 
You know, yeah. if they have, you know, a negative thought that comes into their head, they then have the tools to be able to challenge that so that it does not impact them in the same way that it did before. I love that. Now, my question is, you work with new entrepreneurs and also existing entrepreneurs, correct? What yes. are some of the things that you see that they struggle with? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what I find is the biggest ones are either a fear of failure or conversely, a fear of success. And I they both feed that. into themselves, <laughs> right? They yes. both feed into themselves. But those yes. are the two that I find is the biggest struggle. Which, you know what, a lot of people can really say, oh, I'm scared to fail. That's a mm -hmm. kind of an easier one, but I'm finding I'm scared to succeed is more of a difficult one to address. Mm -hmm. And why are they fearful of success? Is it yes. is there guilt around it? You know, all of the beliefs, the emotions wrapped into it. Do you mm -hmm. see that as well? Oh, yeah. The whole notion even that money is evil, right? I mean, this is something in society that we've heard over and over again, you know, in messaging, right? And yeah. so, you know, I just find and that they're going to become a different person. Yeah. You know, they're fearful that they're going to become a different person and then lose relationships that are meaningful to them. You know, all of those things that has been fed by messaging in terms of societal expectations or maybe their own upbringing. Maybe they saw something happen, you know, with their parents or with some loved ones or with some friends. And so they took that to mean that that would happen anytime yeah. somebody achieves success. But that's not the case. That's you true. ultimately have a choice. Yeah. Everything that happens in your life, you know, in terms of how you view it and yeah. how you then choose to proceed from that is your choice. Yeah. It's your choice. I love that. And I also find, I was just in a conference. I, I went to a conference and I was a panelist on, in the conference and we were talking a little bit about the fear of success and and as a mom, and he, this, this even goes for dads out there, right? We're successful. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the prioritization kind of, you know, it, it gets shifted, right? So as moms, I'm finding as a mother, and I can only speak as a mother, the guilt around, you know, becoming more successful, you know, having, you know, more platforms to go on to discuss these types of topics. And, and it's pulling me a bit away. And I do have to sit back and go, and you know what? I'm filling each of my buckets, right? I'm mm -hmm. filling my purpose, my passion bucket. And also the time that I spend with my kids, I'm filling that mom bucket up and I'm doing the absolute best that I can, but I truly do want to be successful in all areas of my life. So mm -hmm. you're right. You have to look at it and go, okay, what kind of belief systems are being wrapped into everything that I'm doing? It can be hard. You really have to kind of sit with yourself a bit. And I appreciate you saying that and talking about yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's really hard and you're welcome. Yes, yes. Okay, so I read on your website that many struggle with advancement in, in the workplace. And I know a lot of folks are dealing with that right now who's, you know, they're tuning in. How much of this is mindset and how much of this is strategic alignment to leadership advancement? And the reason why I say that is because I worked at two very large corporations. Now, several years ago, I won't date myself, but there was always kind of like this path when you became an employee, there was this path that they kind of led you down, right? And a lot of folks get stuck, right? Or they get disappointed in the path that they're going down. Does that have to do with mindset or is that the process that they're in? I think it's probably a little bit of both, but I would say the majority falls on mindset 100%. I yeah. mean, you know, there are going to be processes in any organization, any corporation that you cannot necessarily change. The process is the process and that's the way it is, but yeah. it's how you approach that process. It's okay. how you choose to approach that process. Like the way I look at it is that if you look at any, you know, successful CEO, business owner, founder, what is one thing that they all have in common is confidence. Yeah, that honestly, it's one thing that they have in common, you know, they walk into a room, and you can feel that energy off yeah. of them. And everybody wants to be in their presence. There is something to be said about the energy that you exude. You yeah. know, and I think that when it comes to feeling like you're stuck in the workplace or like you can't move ahead, you really need to sit down with yourself 
and reflect on why is it that you're feeling that way? What is fueling that? Because if you start making excuses, right, excuses, or blaming those around you, then you're not focusing on the one thing that you have control over, which is yourself. Yes, I love that. And I love that you speak to the fact that people, that energy around confidence when they come in the room, the CEO, the CFO, I think that, and I'm just, you know, I'm just sharing this and you're the expert. I'm wondering if it's because of the experiences of, you know, failing and then finding their way, you know, to overachieve or accomplish, right? We get setbacks and then we find our way to keep moving forward. Do you think that is a part of the whole confidence piece? Yeah. I mean, if you look at, you know, a task that happened and you see it as a failure, then that is going to impact your confidence. If you see it as an opportunity to learn and grow and then pivot or shift or change with you still having your ultimate goal, you know, your ultimate purpose in your mind, then it's not a failure anymore. Yeah. And then that, you know, speaks to your confidence. And so it's like, you can put yourself in this vicious cycle. Yes. You know, if you're constantly looking at situations that maybe didn't go as planned or didn't go the way you wanted them to, and you're looking at those as a failure, then of course, you're not going to be confident. Yeah. Of course, you're going to exude an energy where it's not, you know, it's not someone that a manager or an owner would look at you and say, oh, you know, you are a confident person. And I know that you have the abilities and the skills to go into this promotion. Yeah. Right. And so I think it's really, really important in terms of how you view situations that have happened. I now purposefully never use the word failure. I never use that word because it's only a failure. If you stop, it's only a failure. If you then give up. That's true. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you talk kind of about knowing your why, right? Your goal. Yes. Why are we doing this? Why are we in this job? What's our end game? You decided to work for this company or pursue this path for a reason. Knowing your why is really important. I love that. I love that you said that. Now I have another question for you and I'm reading it right off of the sheet. Today's climate, it's really tough overall for folks looking for professional satisfaction due to COVID. COVID's caused a lot of problems and we won't dive into that. And then also, unfortunately, with unemployment or the professional landscape changing, what would you say to those professionals that are looking to make, wanting to make some changes professionally? And they're struggling with, you know, the idea of, changing it up or some belief systems around, okay, should I leave my current job? How would you guide them? Yeah, you know, it's a big one. So what I will say, and it's not because I'm trying to toot my own horn, but it's because I want individuals to recognize that it is possible. I built my Be A Diamond coaching business during COVID, during a pandemic. Wow. That's, I built this business during a pandemic. And so, you know, it started back in July of last year. And so, you know, what I always say to individuals, and it's hard for people to let this go, but you don't always necessarily know the how you're not always going to know the how you're Mm -hmm. going to achieve something. Yeah. But if you follow your intuition, And if you have faith, whatever your faith is, it doesn't have to be faith in terms of a religion. It can be faith in a higher power, faith in your creator, just having faith in the belief that you will find your way. Then that is the most powerful thing. I didn't know how I was going to launch my business. I did not know how I was going to have the funds to be able to do what I needed to do to launch a new business. But I made a decision. I followed my gut and I made a decision that this was something that I wanted to do. And I put that out into the universe. I, you know, spoke about it every single day with intentionality in my gratitude, in my journaling, in my visualization. And it happened. It happened. Things start to come to you because that is the energy that you're putting out. And people just need to understand that. Yep. I a hundred percent agree with you because that law of attraction piece, it's so important. I just knew my why I'm just speaking on what I do. I just knew my why in the beginning was to give as many hope ropes as I possibly could 
you know, put it out there in the universe, help as many people as I could and how I was going to go about doing it really was irrelevant to me. I just knew my Mm -hmm. why I trusted that the path that I was going to go down was going to bring more things to me. And so far it has. So Mm -hmm. you know what, Sabrina, for the longest time, I struggled with connecting to my gut. I didn't have that natural ability like you have to connect to my gut. And I had to learn to really dig deep and start connecting to my gut instincts on what I wanted for my life and what I needed to do to get there. So, yeah, I mean, kudos to you to, to just know, I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and thank you. And thank you for sharing that. I find yeah. that oftentimes, you know, when individuals have a hard time trusting their intuition, yeah. it's because of something much deeper right? Yep. It's usually because of something much deeper. And that's what you need to hone in on. You need to figure out what it is that is preventing you from trusting yourself. Because we will go and we will ask all of our neighbors and our distant cousins and our friends for yes. their opinions about something when we want to make a decision. But the last person we ask is ourselves. Yep. And You're why surprised. is that? You know, I don't it should know. I not learned. be that way. I mm. know. I learned that. I learned for who I am innately and how I'm programmed was that I did not trust myself. But really, if somebody gave me a suggestion that I really didn't like, I wouldn't do it. So I don't know why I would always, you know, do those behaviors and ask for everybody else's opinion. And really I instinctively knew I just didn't connect to it right away. So Mm -hmm. yeah. And I really struggled with that professionally as well until I've learned and figured out where the links were to that. (laughs) <laughs> and boy, yeah. that was a process. So yeah. anyway, we won't dive deeper, but I do have a question for you. What inspires you with the work that you do? There's two things. One is, you know, what we kind of touched on already is helping individuals to really step into their own, you know, helping individuals to recognize that they have limitless potential. And it's not that everybody that I work with wants to start this massive business or start a podcast, you know, that's not the case, but it's helping them achieve what it is they truly desire. That is the first thing that inspires me. And then the second thing, you know, I find that it's such a collaborative relationship. You know, they learn from me, but I also learn from them. You know, I learn from every individual that I enter into a working relationship with, and it helps me to then become a better person. And I want to become a better person, not just for myself, but I want to be able to show my children. I want to be able to show my children a legacy that they can achieve, they can do, and they can be anything that they want. I absolutely love that. (laughs) That's how I feel. That's why I think we connected so well. So thank you so much for sharing that. My podcast is all about hope ropes. Now, the person that's tuning in today or listening to this podcast later, and they're really struggling with anything and everything personally and professionally, what would you give them or words of encouragement or advice would you give them today? You know, I would tell you, I'm going to speak to, you know, individuals out there, right? I would tell you that you can do and be anything that you want. The only person that is keeping you from doing that is yourself. And so what I would say is that the greatest investment that you can make is in yourself. That is the greatest investment. And if you can tap into that and you can decide to invest in yourself today, then you will set yourself up for success. And that would be what I would say to anyone. I think that was excellent. (laughs) I feel it. So thank you so much. Now, if somebody is struggling and they want to work with you, what's the process of working with you? And then also second question is, What type of programs do you have out there? Yeah, absolutely. So anyone can work with me. I have, you know, my website and it has all of my information in terms of, you know, who I am, what it is I do, the type of programs that I offer. So individuals can definitely go on to that website. And I think that we'll be including that in the information here. And so that's one way to let you talk. And I wanted to make sure that everybody knows your website address, which is www.com. B a diamond 
coaching.com. And I'll put that in the summary as well. So that way people can link to it. Yeah, thank you. So that would be the first way, you know, that someone that can get in contact with me or figure out, you know, if this is something that, you know, they could align with. I do have, as you've mentioned, an amazing Facebook community. And so I would highly, highly recommend that if you want to see, you know, who I am and how I present myself and how I work and what it is I have to offer, definitely be in that Facebook community. Next week, I'm actually doing a free three-day challenge on thinking and growing rich. And so it would be a fantastic time for people to get in because then they would see me in action. And this is free training for everybody. And so that would be, you know, another avenue that they could take. And then in terms of programs, so I have an individualized coaching program that is tailored to, you know, the person's needs. And so that is one way that you can get in touch with me and work with me. And then I just recently launched a brand new signature course, which I am super, super excited about. I developed it from, you know, belly up, ground up. It's called Becoming a Diamond Signature Course. And it really will set the foundation for someone who is not sure yet if they want to work individually with a coach, but they know that they need to do some work on their mindset. And so it's a fantastic course. That is awesome, Sabrina. Okay, I want to make sure that I get that information out there. Is it going to be on your website and on your Facebook page? Yeah, it is. Yes. Okay, wonderful. We'll make sure to post that. You're so awesome. (laughs) I took so many things away today. And I'm so grateful for you being on my platform today. I think you're going to be inspiring so many people and you know, you're going to get new clients today. So I'm so excited for you. Oh, and you know what, Julie, I am so thankful that you've had me on here and you're right. You know, I feel that we connected for a reason. We've manifested ourselves to each other. So there you have it. I know. I know. Well, thank you so much. And I just want to plug Sabrina Martelli. You can find her on Facebook, sabrina.martelli.9. I'll make sure to post that information on there. She's on many platforms, you guys. She's on Instagram and it's Sabrina Martelli underscore be a diamond. She also has a YouTube channel, which is super awesome. She's on LinkedIn as well. And, you know, especially for those professional folks out there, that's really important. And she's under Sabrina Martelli. So please do a search on her. She's on TikTok as well as Clubhouse, which I'm excited about because collaboration, which is like going to be huge. So thank you so much, Sabrina. I hope you have a fantastic day. And you guys, this podcast episode will be available here shortly. And you guys stay tuned for our next episode, which will be tomorrow with Dr. Wistat. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Have a great day. Wow, what a great episode and a special thank you to our expert today. I hope today's episode inspired you, empowered you, and gave you some hope today. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. Cheers, my friend. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please subscribe, rate, review, or even share this podcast to someone who needs hope and inspiration. You can connect with me at www.flipinshift.com. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and even Clubhouse at Flip In Shift. Please join me next time for another expert chat or survivor talk.